Aloha, and this is The Art of Light. I'm your host, Willow Chang Alion, and we broadcast live every Friday from 2 to 3 p.m. right here in the heart of downtown at Pioneer Plaza. And one of the fun, exciting things, uh, enthralling, sometimes nerve-wracking elements of live broadcast is sometimes things happen and they're just unexpected. And one of those unexpected things has happened. Our guest just walked in, which is great. So let us do this. It's a... Uh, it's live, friends. We're going to just take a moment to hook up our guest, and then we will get the party started on the art of life. Oh, my goodness gracious, are you in luck. You know what? The hurricane blew away the biggest storytelling event in the state, and we rescheduled it. <laughs> the part of the Parks and Recreation announces the 26th annual Talk Story Festival, the biggest celebration that you've ever seen. Now, hold on to your hat. After Halloween the next weekend on October, November 7th and 8th. That's what? You're right, 7th and 8th. From 6 to 9 o'clock, both nights, free spooky stories on Friday night. The best storytellers were bringing them in from the Big Island or from Maui. Oh, my goodness, don't come alone. And on Saturday, it's beyond us. Eight of us are coming together and passing the story of Pele and Hi'iaka, the biggest epic tale the Hawaiians have yet produced in print. We're going to put it on our tongues and spit it out. Here's a word to the wise. Smart birds who love stories go down to McCoy Pavilion, November 7th and 8th, for story time! Six to nine, absolutely free, brought to you by your parks department. Can you tell? I'm really excited. I'm really <laughs> I can't see myself. Oh my goodness, it's the art of life. We're live. Fantastic. And if you were wondering why we have this lovely little jack o' lantern here, that's because it is the witching hour, ladies and gentlemen. It is our Halloween show. We always try to bring something fun and colorful and exciting, and I think today's show fits that bill. Our guest is the one and only human beatbox of Hawaii Ne, Jason Tom. He is a busy, busy bee. We've been trying to get him on the show for over a year. So, Jason, welcome. Hey. <laughs> That's what I was going to say, but, uh, you know. So, uh, the reason why Jason's right here is he's just hot on the heels of a gig. He's one of the hardest working entertainers in the island. I'm going to put that on record and say that. But, yeah. you know, Tell us all about the journey of beatboxing. Now, some people are familiar. Some of us who might have grown up in the 80s uh -huh. uh, are familiar with beatboxing. Right, right. But some people may not be. Mm -hmm. So it's a vocal art form. And mm -hmm. how did you get involved in it? Just tell us how Jason Tom came to be. Do you want me to break that history down break of, it of down. what beatboxing is all about? Break, the it, break it down about when you were in the womb and you hear your mama's heart beat. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So let me break down the history of, of beatboxing okay. for those that may not be aware of what that art form is. It's like a... The foundation of it is kind of like scat singing, a cappella, a cappella, and also an urban vocal percussion. So you put it all together and you get human beatbox. And it was uh, popularized in hip hop culture in the early 80s, 1982 is around when Dougie Fresh coined the term human beatbox. And then Buffy of the Fat Boys was the first to be on the mainstream to uh, make it very uh, popular, that term, you know, Buffy of the Fat Boys. <laughs> You know, that's his style and stuff. And then Dougie Fresh, of course, with click close. <laughs> Something like that. So Dougie Fresh, and uh, they just pioneered the art form. And, and there was many more after that. You know, Rudzell, the, the legendary Roots crew. He's one of my big box mentors. And I also studied, uh, you know, Michael Jackson, one of the greatest entertainers Never of all Never heard time. of him. No, <laughs> so Michael Jackson, so he, people may not realize this, but Michael Jackson actually composed all of his songs that he wrote with beatboxing. He would record himself on a dictator machine. <coughs> you know, and, and that's how he would write lyrics. He'll, he'll give to each musician, like he'll do the bass line, the, the percussion, the drum, the drum sounds, the uh, horns, and give it to each musician exactly how he heard it in his head, and that's how he composed. And that you know, inspired me. And I was like, wow, I didn't know he did that. You know what, and I'm just gonna jump in and say something yeah. to follow up with that, which sure. is news to me, which is really cool. I think a lot of times people, if they have not had formal training, because sometimes mm. there's environments where they feel like, oh, well, you know, I don't know how to do 
um, I don't know how to notate music, or yeah. I don't know theory, or yeah. I, know, I don't know what's on the staff of the right, bass or the treble. Right, right, right. But you know what? That's a great example mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. when you're working with musicians, right. where their job is to hear that, yes. you have this way of communicating to yes, them yes. with sound, yeah. with the voice, which mm -hmm. everybody has one. Some yeah. of the greatest songwriters yeah. didn't read music. Exactly. The Beatles, Michael right. Jackson, he didn't read, they didn't read music, but they were able to write some of the greatest music that is known today in popular music, you know, as far as like what they, you know, the message behind their Absolutely. songs, you know, about love, about uh, peace and world, you know, unity and whatnot. So it's, it's. He said world peace. I wanted to say world dominion. Oh, not the same dominion. thing. <laughs> not well, the same thing. I just wanted to share too, you know, um, I know this is a Halloween show, but mm -hmm. I, I just want to share that, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's good and all, but, you know, uh, it's all about beatboxing. <laughs> <laughs> what he's trying to say, I'll translate it, beatboxing is for every occasion. Exactly. Um, it's, the it's not just for one occasion, okay. it's for every single day. It's, it's a, a daily style. practice. It's, it's daily the art practice. of life. It's the art of life. Yeah, it absolutely. Is, yeah. This is your art of life. So, uh, Tell us about how you got into it, because okay. some people might think, well, mm -hmm. he didn't grow up in New York City, right, he's not right. of the, the, of the ghetto. Of yeah, it, or right, so, like, right. we know what's... How did that come to be? And it's, I just want to be clear. Yes. You don't have to be from. You don't have to be of the ghetto. I'm using those right, quotations. Right. You don't mm -hmm. have to be financially disenfranchised right, right. to enjoy the music yes. and the art of using your voice as a skilled it, instrument. It's interesting. It's like clear. a lot of the stereotype is you got like they when people came across me they're like. Mm -hmm. There's no way you're a beatboxer. You're not. Oh, you're nice not, Chinese boy. You're not a big <laughs> dude, and you're not black. Yeah. It's not an art form that was started with the blacks. It, human beings have been using their voices an, as an instrument for years, for, right. for decades, for centuries. You know, so it, it's like, it's interesting how people associate, because that's the pioneers. Most yeah. of them were black Americans, you know, but it's not limited to that. Like, there's Hispanic people that do it. There's Asian people that do it. There is, uh, you know, many backgrounds, you know. Um, there's not, it's not limited to one race. It's everybody. It's universal. It's universal. And yeah. It's a global art form. And so let me break down the history of how I got started into it. Okay. So when I was a young kid, I was four years old. I grew up in the early 80s. I was actually born in 1982 when Dougie Fresh coined the term human beatbox. So I was literally born the year that the term was coined. Woo. You know, and he was the first human beatbox, Dougie Fresh, uh, to use that term. But of course, he wasn't the first to use his voice because there's tribes that use mm -hmm. as a language. You know, the tongue clicks. Yeah. And so, um, you know, it's in Africa and whatnot, and, but there's whatnot. But anyways, let me break down the history. So in 1982, I was um, in the mid in 1980s, I was really into Michael Jackson and, and Michael Jackson's bad music video and whatnot came out. And I was just like, I love the assertiveness and his energy and the way he was dancing and also sung. That message just spoke to me. I was like, wow, it was like that energy and that assertiveness even though I didn't know what assertiveness, assertiveness was, I kind of got that impression. You were drawn to it, I yeah. was drawn to it. So I was like, that music was stuck in my head. And so I wouldn't have the record at home. I wouldn't even see it on TV or something. And so when I wanted to, uh, in my mind, I said, okay, I want to play the record as the way I heard it. So I heard it in my head. So I recorded myself on audio cassette tape. Mm -hmm. This is before digital era, right? This is yeah, like this is before you had your phone. Your smartphone like, and to stuff. Build. So you have to like... You know, whatnot. It's like a VCR, but VHS. VHS. What did I say, VCR? Okay. Yeah. VHS, and then, but it's like an audio version. So I recorded myself beatboxing Michael Jackson Bad. So I started off with, like, I seen the melody of the bass line. So dun 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 and adding the vocals at the same time. We're going to add the rest of your story after this break. Sure. That means it's a cliffhanger. you got to stay tuned for the Art of Life. Hello, my name is Kenneth Lawson. I'm your host here at Life in the Law. I'm really interested in law as I practiced it for 18 years before coming to Hawaii. I practiced criminal law and civil rights law on the mainland. Now I teach law at the University of Hawaii Law School, William S. Richardson School of Law. And I bring in guests who are very current on legal issues that affect your life here in Hawaii. Uh, come and join me every Wednesday at 1 p.m. as we explore how the law affects you, how the law is changing, and why it's important that you should care about what's going on in your community. See you then. Holy. Okay, right. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, 
We're live. Look, oh, sure. all the magic, all the oh, excitement. Sure. This here. is the art of life. And our ghost, our, our ghost. Wow, I'm in the spirit here. Our guest today is none other than the Jason Holy ghost. Tom. <laughs> Jason <laughs> Tom, who has been delighting audiences not only here locally in Hawaii, Nei, but also abroad. Just came back from a trip in... Oh, actually not abroad, uh, in, in, on the East Coast. Well, you know. Well, for us, that's like yeah, abroad. Yeah, <laughs> that's on the mainland. It was uh, basically like a 10-hour nonstop flight, and as soon as I got off, major jet lag, and I entered the uh, fifth annual American Beatbox Championship. Represent. And I represent it, yeah. So I did one of my, uh, did two of my originals. It was, you know, um, there were things that, you know, organization-wise, it was rough, rough around the edges. Yeah. Uh, so there's stuff that caught me off guard because of the last-minute changes. But you know what? I got there. I enjoyed the moment, you know, experience-wise, and I ran to, you know, I, I reunited with Michael Winslow, who I've like opened for in Honolulu for three shows already, Woo. back in 2009 and also um, 2012. For those that don't know who Michael Winslow is, he's the guy that that did Police Academy and Spaceballs. He did all the sound effects. He's known as the man of 10,000, 10,000 sounds. That's fantastic. Yeah. And I'm not to be confused with Mel Brooks, I believe it was 10,000 Voices. Mm -hmm. So he did like sounds, he does sounds like <clears throat> everyday sounds, he does beatboxing, so he mixes it with comedy. And it was just amazing and it just inspired me. I like, was blown away by his show. He's a legend, he's a living legend, you know. And, uh, you know, some of the mentors I studied, Michael Jackson is of course one, and Bobby McFerrin, mm -hmm. you know, because um, he did everything with his voice. Absolutely. Um, and then also uh, Razelle of the legendary Roots crew, who t I, I honestly believe he is the one, Razelle is the one that pushed the art form of beatboxing further than anybody besides Michael Jackson. Because Michael Jackson really utilized it as a songwriting aspect. But as far as like a pure beatboxer, mm -hmm. Razelle is the guy. Razelle is the guy. As far as a pure vocalist, Michael yeah. Jackson, oh, hands down. Cause he sung, he, he did more than just singing, he, he used it as a full instrument, but not only that, he used his entire body right. as an instrument. A consummate performer yes. as well. Now, I want to bring something up, or mm -hmm. address something yes. that you mentioned, which yes. I think is really important for our viewers out there right. to think about, and that is, you're citing people that you've influenced and you've studied extensively. Yes. And again, mm. the, we're, we're, I'm kind of coming back to this idea where sometimes in academia yes. or when people have um, maybe a traditional structure, mm -hmm. some people, un they don't understand the value of self-study. And I uh, know this uh. is something we see a lot within the Middle East and dance community mm -hmm. or in places that are a little isolated. And hey, sometimes Hawaii is pretty isolated. We're in the middle of the ocean. Right, Thank right. God for the digital era. Yeah, but yeah. You know, watching lots of DVDs or I mean uh -huh. CDs, listening right, to CDs, right, right, watching right. VHS tapes mm -hmm, over and over mm -hmm. and over again. There is something very inherently valuable in uh -huh. that. Whether you're like rocking the card catalog uh -huh, back in uh -huh. the 80s, doing yeah. your own research. I mean, I think sometimes mm -hmm. when there's so much access to information, mm -hmm. perhaps people don't understand or appreciate mm -hmm. how much value there is in that process. Mm -hmm. How do you feel that growing up in Hawaii? Yeah. Um, influenced your practice? Uh, I would say that travel has had a great influence too, mm -hmm. but uh, definitely like you were saying, watching VH VHS tapes and stuff and listening to audio cassettes and CDs and whatnot, I studied, even though I wasn't an entertainer or a musician growing up, or none of my family members or relatives, mm -hmm. I just watched his stuff like every day, you know, and I just, I, I didn't realize I was actually studying him, but event I never thought of myself as somebody that would eventually be on stage right. as a musician. Um, and it, it's thanks to, you know, Jesus, you know, like, honestly, he, he um, kind of, I guess through the Holy Spirit, he was just blessing me with this gift, this blessing of a talent. Right. And so um, that creativity, because he's, to me, he's that source. He is the source of creativity. He created everything. So uh, for me, that's where I, I, I credit my, my creativity and my art is from him. And that's how I started my walk six years ago, October 24th, 2008. And this is actually the six year anniversary of my walk with the Lord. So, there you go. Um, Congratulations. I, he's definitely my mentor mm -hmm. uh, because if it wasn't for his word, you know, what his word says, that has taught me a lot about wisdom, about how to love on people, how to relate with people. Because mm -hmm. relationship is very important. Right. And so with it just pours out in my music. 
important in my music because I'm about reaching out. It's not about judging a person. It's about loving on them. And it's about showing what the truth is, the, the light, and, and just being a light to people and just, just bringing joy. Because this brings me joy, the, yeah. you know, this talent and stuff. So, um, But definitely traveling helps a lot. Because when you travel and you literally, literally meet Mm -hmm. the the people that has pioneered the art form in person yeah, is a whole different atmosphere. It, it's like I lose my mouth. I mean, not lose my mouth, but I get speechless. Yeah. When I met Roselle for the first time back in uh, 2010, it was for the International Human Beatbox Convention and First American Beatbox Championship. And he was just there chilling. And I was like, Roselle? Whoa! And, it was like, I just, <laughs> and then this time around, I, I reunited with him in New York, 2014. It's the second time we reunite, and prior to that, we were in touch. You know, we, we would chat on Facebook. He's, yeah. you know, he, he respects me for what I do. He actually shared with me on Facebook one day. One, one day we were chatting, and he just said, you've crafted, you've crafted your own delivery and style. Coming from someone that I admire and someone I, I look up to as a mentor, who is a pure beatboxer, yeah. past saying that to me, I'm a pure beatboxer too, and I'm like, wow. That means it's priceless. You cannot put any price to that. Price tag. And of course, you know, for me, my relationship with Jesus, he encourages me all the time. He's not a person of condemnation. He's not a person of, of you know, God is not like that. He, he called me to do this with my gift, to not give up, to keep going. He encouraged me to do the moonwalk. I did the moonwalk and did a wedding to talent show, and that's what I was saying. Okay, I'm going to keep doing this. You know? it's, it's all a journey yeah. of healing and it, communication. For it sure. is, you know, he is our healer and, and for real. And, you know, he changed my story. You know, he changed my story. Because for, before I started wine walk with the Lord, it was hard. It was difficult. Mm -hmm. um, I would hit roadblocks creatively, creatively, and it's just, uh, I just said, you know, I got to turn to the source. And that's where I get my inspiration, actually. Mm -hmm. You know, not only from the mentors I study, right. but when I, when I tap into that source, the Holy Spirit, that's what draws the ideas. Like, someday I'll be like, I'll come up with a new melody, or it'll just come out of me. I don't think about it. It just comes out. It's just um, in the flow. It's in the yeah. flow of the spirit, right? And so when I get into that zone, it's just, it's like, whoa. It's like a hundred uh, ideas just come out. You know, I can practice for four hours straight at Ala Moana Mall or something to sit at one spot. Just practice, practice. And ideas come after, the, uh, you know, whatever. It just comes out, you know. I'm curious. So now you've addressed how mm -hmm. you have the healing of the spirit yes. and what, what uh, fuels your spirit and yes. your soul. Yes. I'm curious about maintenance of the body because right. that's something we yes. had a Kamawala Kahuanu on a few, right, right. Uh, a few weeks mm. ago. And He's a good friend of mine. Yeah, and then a lot of times He's funny. people who we see is hilarious and talented, you know. I know him so well. I know him so well because people use their voice so frequently right. so that the body can take rest. a beating. It needs mm. rest. So it, I'm curious mm. what is your what advice would you give people mm -hmm. who need to take some time out? That's right. usually the short of it. You just have to stop talking. But a lot of times it's hard for people. Right, right, right. Well Kamuela, see I know he's a personal friend of mine, mm -hmm. musician friend that we work together, we hung out, we hiked together, everything. We're very personal and yeah. also professional together. We've done g many gigs together. Mm -hmm. And just from the outside, I can see how he's worked. Like, he's, he sometimes he's, he gigs so often, he loses his voice all the time. Yeah. And I've been there. I used to do three gigs a I night. Remember. And half an hour each each uh, each gig, and my voice would be gone it's by then. Demanding. And yeah. And each week, I'll have another set of three gigs a night. And my voice, like, each week, I would just have to recover. Like, just not talk and, and drink tea mm -hmm. and hot water and stuff. But what advice do I have as far as those that need rest and stuff? I guess so. I guess if there's something that you wanted people to know. Like, right. a lot of times people make the assumption, oh, well, he's only, yeah. you know, he's only doing a 15-minute set, or this dancer right. is only doing 20 minutes. But yes. I don't think they're aware of all right. the preparation. The mechanics behind and it. And also, yeah, mm -hmm. the, the toll that it takes on the body. Right. Even so, though it's something you love, so it's we're, demanding. We're made up of, you know, three parts, is which is, the, um, let's see, it's the body, wait, hold on, it's the, yeah, body, soul, and the spirit. Mm -hmm. And so if it's not, there's no balance, then if we don't take care of our body, yeah. then we just, we, we deteriorate in a way. Mm -hmm. But of course we need the spirit, so we need to be balanced, and the soul is, is made up of the mind, will, and emotion. So we just got to make sure that we're all in balance and in key. So for me, what helps with, with me is, um, sometimes I don't realize it, mm -hmm. is I over-practice, mm -hmm. and I don't drink water. Like, actually, I did some of my recent gigs, no water at all, and I went for, like, 
10 minute sets, 20 minute sets without water. And I was still able to perform. No, it didn't go out of wow. my voice. It's because I properly warm up. Mm -hmm. You know, like I'll, I'll, I'll do octaves, I'll do tones. You know, for example, should I? Yeah, do? that's so, cool. So, um, like, la da 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 bum bum. You know, I sing melodies or la da da ba di da da. You know, just something like that. Just, just a sample. Mm -hmm. And you know, and then sometimes <laughs> I'll even play around, hit super high notes. You know, and or even super low, like no, no, no. It's an example right there, you know. It's pretty so. intense, my friend. Yeah, yeah. And I could go higher if I want to, but just... I, I don't doubt it. Yeah. Hold that thought, because mm. we're going to switch out your mic so you can share something with us. Okay, and sure, we'll take yeah. take a little break. This is okay. our guest, Jason Palm, and I'm your host, Lulu Chang Elion. The Art of Life. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jay Fidel. I'm host of uh, Hawaii, the State of Clean Energy, which is our flagship show, which plays 4 to 5 p.m. every Wednesday. And the, uh, the supporters of that show are uh, Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, and the Hawaii Energy. And luckily enough, we have representatives of both of them right here today to tell you more about what they think about the show. Uh, Sharon Moriwaki at my left is co-chair of Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, and she goes first. Sharon? Thank you. Thank you, Jay. I'm so glad that we have this Hawaii, the state of clean energy. This was uh, two years ago when we started this, and we have continued it because it's so important, and there's so many developments happening across the state we hope you'll tune in every Wednesday, 4 to 5. It's wonderful. And uh, Ray is uh, Hawaii Energy. Ray, what is your thought about the same subject? Well, I, I agree completely with Sharon uh, that uh, we are talking about every Wednesday, 4 to 5, uh, we talk about some of the most important subjects that uh, are affecting the islands uh, now and into the future. Uh, energy, clean energy, we need it. Uh, we often run into uh, new ideas that we had not uh, thought about before. Uh, we did just today, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I think we're going to have more of that uh, in the future. So uh, come on down and, uh, and watch us uh, 4 to 5 on Wednesdays, um, and we'll uh, see what happens. We'll see you then. Aloha. Aloha. I'll see you. Aloha. We're back, and it's the Art of Life. This is the Jason Palm edition. He's a human beatbox. I'm not making those sounds. I'm not one of those fancy ventriloquists writing for Miss America. That girl did have skills. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but we've got Jason, and he's going to share with us some of his favorite jams, original mm. work, different sounds. Okay. You know, just take it away. All right. We're here to listen. Let's do it. Yes. Yeah, so, um, hi, my name is Jason Palm, the human beatbox. The Hawaii human beatbox. Here we go. Oh, let me take a burp. Oh my. That sometimes happens. It's improv, right? Okay.
That's a shout out to uh, Josh Skittle. He's a b-boy. He said that one time. Said, hey, you got math skills. He goes, no, I have happy skills. Oh, uh, fantastic. You know, I'm going to just like rattle off a few things because mm -hmm. when I was listening to you. Yes. Okay, so no particular order. One is yes. every time uh -huh. I hear you, and my gosh, I met you, I think, in 2007, uh, which was a while ago, my friend. Wow. Yeah. I don't remember what? what year it was. You are just, the thing that I love is that mm -hmm. you're always... Everyone is a work in progress, but mm -hmm. you are always ascending, 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 mm -hmm. getting better. I hear so many different colors, so many different sounds. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're always polishing that diamond. It's really mm -hmm. impressive. I just have to tell you that. It, it, it's about that, that pushing yourself yeah. as an artist to reinvent, yeah. to reinvent your sound, reinvent your, your, your artistry, yeah. to reinvent what you've already done. So I would say from 2004, that's when I started uh, be as a live beatboxer. Right. So 2004 and up to, I would say, 2008, mm -hmm. I had a particular distinctive sound. Right. And then from there, 2009 to, uh, I would say, 2013, which was last year, right. I had a distinctive sound right there. I, I just reinvented my sound. And then this year, 2014, I really believe right now I'm at that point where I'm evolving again. Evolving and reinventing, doing stuff I haven't done pri previously. Right. In just those like years. Picasso. Just like Picasso. Yeah. So here's another thing I was thinking. Mm. I'm so glad, and I hope you don't take this the wrong oh, way, because sure. I think about this yes. for myself. I'm so mm. glad that no one tried to mm. medicate us. Medicate I know that sounds all. really crazy, but it's like a lot of times when oh, children oh, oh. are different or right. if they have like different ways of focusing, mm -hmm. if they're very focused or if they have lots of different interests, yes. the inclination is to medicate small children to kind of keep it numb and get uh, it just uh, really uh, even. Uh, uh. You know and what? I love yes. the fact that you've got fire because I know your brain, your synapses must be just like firing off. Mm -hmm. I thought, man, here they hook up these monks mm -hmm. to these brain waves. But I would love to see the probes and the electrodes right. on your head because when it'll you're doing the, all that, it'll go off the roof. I think it would be off the charts well, honestly, because there's so many things on, going on. Honestly, like people, sometimes they don't know how to take take what I have yeah. because I have so much energy. Yeah. They, they, they don't realize I'm actually in my early 30s and they're like, how do you have this energy? And I tell them, well, it's, it's really about the art. It's yeah. the creativity. When you, because when we're kids, think about it, a lot of kids have a lot of energy and a lot of kids are geniuses, creative geniuses. Absolutely. Um, when I was a kid, I was very imaginative and to this day, I'm very imaginative. And it's because, you know, I haven't lost that, that, that pure uh, hunger for art. Um, ever since I was young, you know, I was drawing hundreds, literally hundreds of comic books. Mm -hmm. I actually aspired to be a professional comic book artist oh. and prior to getting into music. Yeah. And then from there, I got into sports, so I expressed myself creatively through the physical, the body. And I actually enjoyed that. I wanted to pursue being a professional soccer player, professional judo uh, player. Oh and, my goodness. But, you know, I didn't want something that could injure me, you know, yeah. like, with judo, I actually got so good at it, I became like a, a gold medalist, a multi-gold medalist in tournaments, in local tournaments mm -hmm. in, in California. And uh, with, with judo, I was actually nicknamed Spider-Man. And in soccer, I was actually the leading goal scorer my senior year in, at McKinley High School. So shout out to Tigers. Tigers! Tigers! <laughs> no, I am. Okay, I'm not going to. You know, it's interesting because you mentioned this, and I'm saying this for the sake of our viewers who watch mm. our show with frequency, and if you haven't, well, what are you waiting for? Written invitation? We've got everything archived on both YouTube and the yep, Art of Life yep, page yep. on exactly. Facebook. But that cross-pollinization, you talked about martial arts. Uh, George yes. Garcia, our tango dancer, yes. martial arts, as well yes. as tango, squash, uh, right. and fencing, and all those things. Mm. And you talked about art. Yes. Kamawela Kahuanu is yes. an artist. Yes. Lori Otani, our buto. Ah. Jeff Gear, our storyteller, uh -huh. all fine artists uh -huh. who applied art. And so mm. that's something I think that's essential is I would think that all of those ways of using the body, using mm. the mind, your mm -hmm. creativity, mm -hmm. feeds your process. Yeah, you know? when I look through the, the map, of, of timeline of yeah. what I've gone through, I actually touched upon almost every 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 single element. Yeah. The creative music, 
Um, fizz and cold. But do you make your own chocolate? Do I? Oh, <laughs> you, you can make it for me. Yeah. Oh, if you, yeah. I love chocolate. <laughs> I actually just go to the grocery shop. I can get like a half gallon of uh, chocolate ice cream. I can literally finish that in less than a week. Although it has to be after the gig because oh. we singers know it's yes. just brutal that's to part have of, it on your actually, cords. That's part of my discipline is yeah. I don't eat anything dairy uh, uh, prior to performance. Yeah. I mean, I do eat like hours, hours, hours. I had like breakfast, lunch, mm -hmm. but if it's a night gig, I make sure I don't eat anything prior to the gig, like 15 minutes before yeah. or something like that. And so I eat after though. I yeah. go to Sippy's or something if it's open. <laughs> Because it's open 24 hours, you know. It is. The one ton is killer. But, and we uh, are not getting anything from Zippies. We just love what they but make. But <laughs> back to what you were sharing about yeah. how we touch upon these different elements, mm -hmm. like physical, like sports and stuff and art. With I attribute to doing judo, that helps me with my stage presence. Yeah. Because judo actually helped me having more awareness of every single part of my body. Because, you know, there's techniques where you use that you have to be aware of your balance. Yeah, it's finding that center. That balance, and, and they teach you about, you know, how to break your fall, how to, all those little things. And that actually helped me with my performing. So sometimes people watch me and they're like, how do I do all those things? It's actually because I think because I'm so used to, back in those days when I was training, yeah. getting down and up and jumping all over the place. That's why they call me Spider-Man, you know. Yes. And actually, in my elementary, I was nicknamed Superman. So for some reason... He's just gone all over the... Comic books are yeah. just all, all over my life, you know, so... Um, and still to this day, I still uh, attribute to comics too. And, and your T-shirt. Exactly. I was Jason Todd. That's what I was, uh, yeah. I was referring to. See, we 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 should know comics <laughs> so well. <laughs> well yeah. But um, yeah, my first T-shirt. It was it was that's the foundation of it. Is I wanted it to have a feel of a comic book. Yeah. I told the artist specifically that, and and so he did my concept, and it has the keep a uh, 1970s keep on trucking by R. Crumb. That's that theme behind yeah. it, with an original concept behind it of what I. Um, wanted to communicate. It was called the On The Beat t-shirt and it just had its own cult following. Uh, yeah, unbelievable. it's a killer shirt. I will put a picture of it and up I, on the page. Yes, and yeah. I do have a, a new one that just um, I just designed. Um, I, well, I didn't design it, but I came up with the concept. Yeah. It's called Soar Like an Eagle and actually came up with an original composition for it. So there's a song Ooh, title piece. I like and it. I used it at the first Thursday's Poetry Slam, uh, Hawaii Slam, mm -hmm. uh, this Early, I mean, this month, yeah, early this month, before I went to New York, and uh, I entered the first round with that that piece, uh, Soar Like an Eagle, and I actually advanced to the second round. Good and when I got you. into the second round, I found out I actually advanced to the Grand Slam Finals on April 2nd, it's April 2nd, 2015. Fantastic, congratulations. Yeah. Now, here's a few more random things that oh, just sure. crossed my mind. Mm. I was thinking, man, if someone like Rihanna... <laughs> heard you, mm. they would just pluck you and just have a field day with all the sounds that you create. Right. So you do a lot of collaborative things. I yes, mean, I I've do. seen you work as a dancer, I've seen you work with dancers, you yes. obviously work with poetry. Uh -huh. Tell us about some of the different collaborations that you like to do mm. or things that you're, you know, want to just give well, a one shout of my, out for. Actually, my first collaboration, I believe, mm. it was with Jake Shimabukuro. Okay. Ukulele Virtuoso. And, you know, he's actually one of my influences when I was first starting out. Even before I met him, I was mm -hmm. like just blown away how he could take one four-string instrument and he played it as though his own entire body played it. Oh yeah. And and he put so much behind it and that stage presence, yeah. I was blown away. And I'm gonna tell you a little secret. Yes. So back in the days, this was <coughs> the '90s. Okay. Okay. <laughs> when Java Java Cafe was still around, that's really going way back. Mm. When Jake was. Still in high school. This is really classes. going back. Yeah. Uh, hey, with Jake. Pure Heart. I saw them performing. Um, they had an open mic. Oh, yes. And I mm. remember going home and I said to my mom, Mom, yes. I saw these guys. They uh, are going to be totally famous. They're going to be more famous than C and K because that's like all they could wow. think of to compare them. Right, and you know right, what? Right. Of course, they were madly, madly famous here. Mm. Super famous. And mm. of course, he's gone into a very a uh, well-deserved, respected solo career mm -hmm. as an instrumentalist yes. and as a, yes. as a songwriter and what right. have you. But Composer. it's so cool because you can see that. You see that spark. And I remember when I met you at KCC, yes. it's the same thing. It's like when people have that, that fire mm -hmm. in the belly, that mm -hmm. hunger, as you yes. said, that yes. passion, passion, that motivation yeah. to follow through, to learn, right. to seek. I right. mean, it's undeniable. When uh -huh. you meet people like that, you yeah. never forget it. Right. You know, it's never. Just, you meet that. And then I remember I ran into Jake. It was, the last time I actually saw him was maybe at TEDx Honolulu, we mm -hmm. both were featured, and I opened for him because I went, you know, literally before him or and whatnot. And yeah. We just talked, and he said, you know, 
I told him, man, when we collaborated, I was so green, I told him, because I was just, <laughs> I've never collaborated with anybody before, and he told me, you know, the fair, ever since I first heard you, I knew you, you are great. Yeah. He told me that. He told me that. Yeah. I was like, wow, coming from him, you know, that really, so I just want to say hi, Jake Shimmer Brooker, all. I, I want to say, I, you know, I have to respect you. And yeah, all I, about the happy skills. I, I work with uh, uh, Jody Kamisatsu, actually someone that's a good friend of, um, good friend of uh, Jake Shimon mm -hmm. and he uh, opened up a uh, ukulele school in Hawaii, Ukulele Hale, so shout out to Ukulele Hale. And so I want to actually do more collaborations with Jody Kamisato. Yeah. He's in a group called Heart and Soul. So shout out to Heart and Soul, because I, I just feel that the instrument for Hawaii is widely known as the ukulele, yeah, even though it's, it comes from Portugal. Yeah. And even though, you know, beatboxing came from the East Coast, well, the, uh, the, the term human beatbox came from the East Coast, it's still... I'm, I'm claiming the territory here. That's what's up. The 808 know. state. Well, you know what? On that wonderful note, yes. why don't you uh -huh. share a little more something for us to oh. just feast on? Let me, let me um, take it's a... It's going to hydrate. We're both going to hydrate. Mm. Mas importante. Got to drink. Water, of course. Must have know that crazy other stuff. As a vocalist, it's very important to drink water. Oh, mm -hmm. all right. So I guess I'll do that piece, uh, sort of like an ego. I said I can't remember it though. <laughs> hey, here we go. <coughs> Wait. <coughs> it's kind of weird. It's different atmosphere. But, uh. yeah. You know what? If I don't ever want to get stuck in an elevator, but if I did, you'd be a fun person to be stuck in yeah. an elevator with. Oh, you should have seen, man, in New York when um, after the one of the nights yeah. of the American Beatbox Championships, all of us beatboxers, we, we caught the subway and all <laughs> we were doing was just jamming. Fantastic. And usually in the subway, it's a lot of sketchy people in New York. So usually people don't really like do stuff like that. And a lot so, of times they also don't even pay attention. Yeah. That's what's amazing. And so the beatboxers, believe this or not, I was just being myself, you know, the lowest spirit and stuff. Yeah. And um, the, the beatboxers were giving me props because I just happened to be talking to a female and I ended up getting her number. And Ooh. they were like, whoa! <laughs> they're like, and it was like, it was funny because I wasn't trying to, you know, get, you know, literally, like, you know, do anything with her or anything like that. That's cute. It, it's just, <laughs> it, it's just basically I was just connecting, you know, like yes. I was sharing, this is what I do, this is my art form, this is who I am. You well, know? I'm so glad that you're able to come and share that with us today. Yes. This is Jason Tom, you can find him at on jasontom.com, we'll put some links also on the Art of Life page. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, it's that time, that time we never like, which is the end of our show. Okay. But you know what, I would like to leave this prompt with our viewers out there. There's a lot of activities, and we're going to start going into mm. that big landslide of all kinds mm. of good things with the holidays. I want you to stay safe, stay healthy, wash your hands, go out and <laughs> vote. 
Yes, oh, and four, this four. is a really uh, important time of year, and I want you to think about your dearly departed. You know, think of them, hold them in your heart, light a candle for them, let them know you haven't forgotten them. There's so many things that yes. are going to happen between yes. now and December, <laughs> and every day is an important day. But you know, cherish the time, get involved, use your voice, be heard, and keep it Pono. This is the art of life. Thank you so much, Jason.